Well, welcome back to Alpha Centauri. Welcome back to Urquan Masters. So we're looking for the Melnor May. I'm not seeing his little flo floaty ship anywhere. No. We don't have a lot to offer him, but uh, I'd like to get another upgrade if possible. Mainly because it's just killing me not being able to go to some of these planets. Hey Mel, where are ya? I suppose we could have just gone out and called him with the hyperwave broadcaster. Yeah, knowing our luck we'd have freaking Illrath on our butts. Hey Mel! Where the hell are they? There, there they are! Is. Hi! Once again, we meet to exchange valuable tangibles. Isn't yes, we this are. Fun? Yes, now, this is. What can we do for you today? Uh, we got you some stuff. I would like to make some purchases. Wait, no, I have I'm stuff to sell. Would you like sell to the sell stuff, the then buy the stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 19 units of biological well, that'll damage. buy us, uh, that'll buy us an upgrade anyway. Per you, 118 credits. Alright. What trade items would you like to buy today? Uh, let's buy some new tech. technology. We are now offering. Includes plans for improving the rate of fire. On your lander's stun ray, bolt beamer gun. Nice. Yep. After some wild game, hmm? Well, the changes we made should really make a difference. Sure thing. Unless, of course, that wiring went in backwards. In which case, you won't be able to shoot at all. Or take off, for that matter. Well, I sure hope that no doesn't worry, happen. Captain. We stand behind our work. If something goes wrong, just bring it back to us. And we will fix it. How are we supposed to get it off the planet, you ass? Technology we are now offering in these details for building modifications to your planet land. Nice. Which make them look just short. Hey, 20 more credits. What else would you like to buy? Uh, I'm leaving. It has been a pleasure dealing with you, Captain. We yes. look forward to your next visit. I look forward to it, too. We don't want to buy any of your probes. Oh. Well, hell. Some Pakunk ships. Have you been to their home world? Uh, you know what I'm saying we should probably do next? What should we do next? We should go check the, those two stars. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the, the uh, twin blues. Yeah. The first things first, let's, uh. Now let's go talk to Crybaby Hayes. Him his tin so he can make his foil hat. <laughs> Thoughts. Captain, I'm glad you made it back in one piece. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> oh. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, clear spindle device. Data, the object in question has no clear use or means of activation, but does have superconductive characteristics between 18 and 22 degrees centigrade. That's really good. We suspect that huh. it is a precursor manufacturer, but we cannot be certain without extended study. Summary? In all likelihood, this object is part of a larger device whose capabilities remain unknown. That's the end of our scientist report. Huh. So we have a conductor of some sort, but it's part of a different uh, device. Wow. Captain, oh, yeah. you are to be commended. Keep up the good work. We shall await your return, Captain. All right. Well, I think we can, I think we can afford the fuel. Yep. What else? 
get a dynamo. Yeah, we can get a dynamo. Now we can get a couple dynamos. I'm trying to run out of spaces. Get a crew pod. You know what I'm thinking? What are you thinking? One more fuel bay. It doesn't hurt. Especially because we're going out into the booms. Boonies. Be able to make some long term trips. Yeah. Downside is, is, uh, yeah. All right, well, we've still got three people in the alliance, plus we got these spaffy, or not these spaffy, well, we got the spaffy and we got the pecunks. Uh, thing is, is I can't control those things worth a damn. So if we do use them, we're going to have to set it to uh, cyborg. Cyborg? Yeah. Oh, I know what happened. We can go further than this. It's just a weird limitation of the uh, of the game's control. Ah, uh, Alpha Pegasi. All right, let's go to oh. Alpha Pegasi. It's a long trip. It is a long trip. Now the uh, the Pekunk, What's really neat about them, though, is uh, they have like a three-way shot, which sucks if you're you. They spin really fast. Oh, and ship. Yeah. If you have the cyborg play as them, it's really good. Because they're very effective. And what's even better than that, they, uh... Every time they're destroyed, yeah. they have a random chance of coming back to life. Huh. The full regeneration thing. Nice. Yeah, it is really, really neat. They're like, yes, we destroyed him. Hey, wait, he came back. What the hell? Traveling through the cherry jello. Traveling through. Gotta find out what these twin stars are. So, yeah, here we are. Flying through the space again. Hopefully somebody brought a DVD player. Oh, it's board. 2157. Yep, Happy New Year. Which is alarming. Um... I don't know whether, I think we're probably way behind where we should be at this point in the game. Oh. Because there is a time limit. Well, sure, now you tell me. They are right. If uh, if the Urquan and the Korra just keep going at it, eventually the Korra will win. Mm. And then they're just going to start moving around the galaxy, destroying all the home worlds. Ooh, that sucks. And I could be wrong, I think we got two years left. Ooh. But the good news is that we're, we've got like a really good fitted out starship now. Uh, so we're probably getting to the point where we can actually start like doing some really, real serious goodness. Real serious stuff. Some real serious stuff. Yep. You'd be like, hey, fight us, and we are like, okay, pew, pew, pew. Blows up. Oh, wait a minute. Huh. That's something. You see it? The thing that looks like a giant plus sign? Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. Quas- huh? Quasi-space. We're in quasi-space. Um. This is- now we're in the uh, line jello, I guess. This, prepare for some weird and wild shit. Uh, I just sat through an epi episode with all ores and another episode with a kunk. Yeah, but this is quasi-space. So how weird can this get? Oh, this gets fucking bizarre. Alright, I, I didn't. I didn't think it. I didn't think we'd run into it this quick. 
Well, I shouldn't say this quick. We're like, what on? I think the 16th episode of this now. <laughs> yes, and now the uh, stars are black instead of white. Best part, doesn't cost any fuel to move through quasi space. Huh. Look. Ha ha! Our clever ward has found our nook in time. Um, you are hi. the first brave human. No others have made the trip. This is our home world, Polyolorophily, nestled safe in this Would you mind repeating that? Polyolorophily is a rarity, a natural point of interdimensional fatigue. We use these phenomena to speed our transit through the realities. We are wondering, have you met with the Umgar recently? We entrusted an injured talking pet into their care, and we were curious about its progress. Injured oh. talking pet. It's an Umga, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh... Uh... Yeah, it, it, it looks like something out of Star Trek. You are very clever. Yes, I am Arielu Lalile. And I suppose it has been a very long time since you've met one of my kind. I imagine you humans are still very short-lived. How sad. Ah oh, well, to answer your question, we chose to cease our efforts with the Alliance of Three Stars when it seemed that there was no longer any threat to our Earthlings. I am pleased to see that you, from outside the Slave Shield, survived. You see, therapy. Huh. Yeah, please? You desire honesty. It is given. We have visited your world for many thousands of years into your species past. We have changed things, made modifications. You're a lizard person. Oh, you're the greys, aren't you? <laughs> Our motives are multiple. Our desires complex. Part of what we do on Earth is for your own protection. There are parasites, creatures who dwell beyond. They have names, but you do not know them. They would like to find you, but they are blind to your presence, unless you show yourself. I bet they're the, the yours. The showed themselves, Ooh. and something noticed them. Uh -oh. There are no more androsynths now, only oars. Oh dear. In a way, ignorance is your armor, your best protection. They There's cannot bliss. see you now. They cannot smell you. Much of our work with your people involved making you invisible, changing your smell. If I tell you more, you will look where you could never look before. And while you are looking, you can and will be seen. You do not want to be seen. Forgive us if we forget the importance you attach to such events as this. Our context is infinitely broader than yours in scope, both in space and time. Nevertheless, to please you, I shall try to recall. Yes, now I remember. Here is the sequence. The Urquhart fleets have moved through your solar system, and you are defeated. Your people make the choice not to fight with and for the Urquhart. A shield is cast about your world. Your people are now safe. This makes us happy. Not the Armada long. departs yeah. your star system and moves toward the remaining Alliance members. Ourselves, the Silene, the Yehat, and their adopted Shofixti. The Yehat and Shofixti withdraw to Delta Gorno, but they do not permit the Silene to follow. We are content Gorno. with the flow of events and leave the area to return here. From our perspective, this sequence of events ends here. Huh. Soon after the Urquan defeated the Yeha and imprisoned the Cyrene in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, their siblings arrived to initiate the doctrinal conflict. This battle continues as we speak. Huh. As you know, we live in a dimension. 
function of chasing to hyperspace, which we call quasi-space. Our ships move better in these dimensions through weaknesses in the interdimensional fabric. Although many such weaknesses or portals exist which lead from our dimension quasi-space to various locations in hyperspace, there is only one naturally occurring portal which will transport a ship from hyperspace to quasi-space. We therefore find it convenient to generate our own portals artificially with focused dimensional fatigue rays. As a sign of our long-standing relationship with your species, we would happily fit your vessel with a portal's yes. of its own. But Ooh. your ship is so massive, our units would be ineffective. However, we suspect you may find a sufficiently powerful warp pod element in a portal spawner in the wreck of the Earth Corn Dreadnought on the seventh world at Alpha Pavonis. Alpha Pavonis. Pod back here, and we will prepare a portal spawner for your vessel. We are an endlessly curious species, and we spend much of our time on, how should I say, reconnaissance missions. During one such trip, we witnessed the crash landing of an Urquhorn Dreadnought on the surface of Alpha Pavonis 7. Normally, when an Urquhorn vessel is disabled, it automatically engages self-annihilation circuits to prevent other species from learning the Urquhorn's technological secret. Ah, so In this button. case, however, these circuits must have failed. The Dreadnought did not disintegrate on impact. We landed to explore the wreckage, and were amazed to find a survivor, a talking pet. As you may know, the Urquhorn used these non-sentient creatures for the task of interspecies translation, a task okay. the Urquhorn find ultimately demeaning. The talking pet was severely injured, and we did what we could for the poor creature. But it grew clear that without superior measures, the talking pet would die. We turned to the Unga, whom we have known for many centuries. Their bioscience skills are far superior to our own. The Unga promised to do what they could and let us know how the pet fared. We have not heard from the Unga since. Perhaps if you are traveling through their stars, you can ask them for us. Hmm. Wow. I there's not much grumble in here, but it's actually quite fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, I think we should just go. Yeah, I think we got all the info we need. Child. Right now, here is the tricky part of quasi space. All these portholes lead to somewhere in uh they lead to somewhere in hyperspace. But we don't know exactly where. We don't know exactly where, so let's just start in the corner and hope for the best. Yeah. Watch us end up on the opposite side of the galaxy. Yeah, quasi space. This actually looks pretty cool. I apologize if you're hearing the AC unit in the background. I thought I shut that damn thing off. Oh, we're right where we left. Nice. Perfect. Good, we can go uh, visit the uh, Blue Twins. Back into the Cherry Kool-Aid. Yeah. Hey, it's my birthday. Happy birthday. Now well, it's not my birthday anymore. <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> it was for a second. Oh, this is great. If we can get the porthole, the portal spawner. Yeah. Oh, we are going to, we're going to be able to move a lot faster through this game. That's awesome. And a lot more cheaply, too. Oop. Alpha Pegasi. All right. Ooh, that thing's big. Oh, wow. Nine planets. Marine. No life forms, but there's some greens down there. There's some stuff worth picking up. We'll go down and get them. Oh, 
premium. Oh, what the hell? We'll delete these two. Da, 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 da. We are actually getting to the point in the game where we should start being selective about the resources we pick up. Even more selective than we normally are. Yeah. Scenic world. Bunch of nothing. Yep, it is a bunch of nothing indeed. Radioactive world. Very pink. Pink and orange, here we come. Yep. All right, well, this is gonna make the trip worthwhile. Yeah. Scoop that up. Radium. More radium. Proactinium. Well, we met the Aralu. Yeah, definitely, uh... <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, unlike the ores or the Pakunk, they weren't annoying. No, they weren't annoying. They just... They're really weird. They're just way out there. Both literally and figuratively. No, I didn't think we'd, uh, we'd be able to actually get to them just yet. I remember there was a porthole out there somewhere, but uh, I didn't know the criteria for entering it. I think it only and I think it only opens at certain times of the month. Makes sense. Portal open, portal closed. Portal open, portal closed. They open their portals so all the snowbirds can uh, get <laughs> out of hyperspace. Uh, a whole lot of nothing here. Come on, Orc World. Come on, Orc World, not a piss world. Treasure, Ooh, treasure world. world. Look at all that loot. All that loot with yeah, all that loot with none of the weather. Yep. Well, if only we could find some life forms. Yeah, no kidding. How about, li how about the life forms on a planet we can actually land on? Yeah, no kidding. A lot of iridium in that one. All right, and we're off. I can't remember if we can get Arlu ships on our side or not. It'd be really cool if we could. They're they're neat. They can like teleport around the map. We don't care anymore. Xenolithic world. You certainly are yawning a lot. Yeah, and I don't know why. I didn't sleep. Probably right. because the Arulu are so boring. No, I actually found the Arulu interesting. I'm just. I didn't sleep very well last night, and that's probably catching up with me. Uh, just remember, you're one with the poot worm. Whatever you say, bird brain. And fingers and beaks. Yomp and yimini! Get over here. Oh, we got faster guns now, anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Guess get him. Get him oh, yomp and yimini doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. Best part is, is we're getting... 
We're getting biological data. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and some platinum. All right. Out we go. Well, this could be one of anything. Hopefully, it's something good. Stinking opalescent world. Well, some opalescent worlds have good stuff, but this is not one of them. Oh, just three more planets to check out. Ooh, there's a red. Usually, reds are either awesome or suck. This one looks like a Almost suck. always suck for what I can tell. We did find that one Ruby World though. That was nice. Ruby Worlds are fantastic. Here we go. Back to old yeller, Uria World. Yep, the Nade oh. World. Too dangerous to land on world. Yep. Anything above a four, forget it. Yep. All right, Light Blue, what do you have for us? Organic world. Mmm, it's tectonic y. Yeah. Alright, well, nothing there. Frickin' Whole Foods. We're gonna have to go to Beta Pegasi. Hopefully that's where, wherever this, uh, special world is. Unless okay. those stinking Slylandro are liars. We haven't ran into any probes lately, that's kind of a bummer. Never thought I'd ever say that. <laughs> of course. When we were scared of them, they're, they come out a dime a dozen, but now we're not scared of them. They're, they're the ones running under the bed. Yeah, like a damn dirty penny. Well, Nothing Planet there. 5 sucks. Gassy, how you doing? Ooh, a Selenic world full of nothing. Bunkum. Full of hookum and bunkum and tat. And carbuncle. And arbuckle. <laughs> Turnbuckle arbuckle. <laughs> My favorite wrestler. He's joking, folks. Arc world. Gold. Well, at least there's something to bring home to Hayes. Yeah. That gold digging bitch. That's right. He's like, we went radioactive. We went radioactive. And meanwhile, he's taking all the gold out of everything. He's like, that's for me. Radioactive for you. Gold for me. Radioactive for you. Silver for me. Radioactive for you. Palladium for me. You're gonna go back and Hayes is gonna be sitting on a giant pile of gold. Yeah, he's gonna Scrooge McDuck that shit. Be diving into the uh, pool of gold coins. I hope he doesn't break his neck. Well, they said if you do actually try to uh, dive into a uh, pool of gold coins, that's a likely outcome. Almost as if it has no give, like a liquid and wasn't intended to be swam in. Yeah. You can melt it and swim in it. And that would not end well. Nope. Because in order to make liquid, gold has to stay at very hot temperatures, including temperatures that could uh, irre irreparably damage skin. Yitrick world. Yitrick world. A bit tectonic -y, though. Yep. Too tectonic -y for my liking.
Well, this better be that special world they kept chatting about. And it is. It's like a rainbow world. It is a rainbow world. Of all sorts of stuff. Oh, this is going to pay and it's going to pay well. Oh, oh, hot, hot, hot. Feel it hot, hot, hot. <laughs> all right. Um, We're going to have to do a really quick. Rainbow world's a little bit dangerous. But we really need the resources. I'm just gonna have to do a smash and grab. Thorium, Neptunium. We're getting there. We're killing off a lot of our crew, though. <laughs> Well, we traveled all the way to find this damn planet. We, at least we can grab something from it. Alright. Yeah, I'm thinking. What are you thinking? Gamma Muske. I think it's time to go out there, call up our buddies, and get some reasonable uh, loot. Gamma Muskie, that sounds familiar. Uh, we were looking at Epsilon Muskie earlier. Ah. Uh. And now we wait. The waiting is the hardest part. There they are. Well. It looks like they're going to take forever to get here, so I guess that's, uh, that's the episode. Alright, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and have a good day.